Yes, Yesterday was uh, Apple's best day since May 1st, rising sharply on some trade war tariff relief. But does this morning's uh, yield curve inversion signal trouble? Head joining us now is Tom Forte, Senior Research Analyst and Managing Director at DA Davidson, who has one of the street's highest price targets on Apple at 270, and Tim Lesko, Principal at Granite uh, Investment Advisors. And I guess I'd start with uh, Tom and Tim, and, and we'll start with you, Tom. What is the key thing that anyone that buys Apple now should be thinking uh, about? Is it, it's not tariffs, is it? Is it it's, it's more things specific to Apple, or do we worry about if something happened with China where they just, you know, something really, you know, there was a scorched earth against Apple? But other than that, it's, it's their transition in ser to a services model rather than hardware, I think, isn't it, Tom? So definitely the long-term story for Apple is moving away from their dependence on the iPhone, which was 60% of their sales uh, in their last fiscal year. But when you look at today's news on the inverted yield curve, uh, I would argue on a short-term basis for Apple's shares, the greater risk is concerns of a global economic slowdown. I think that trumps the risk of the China trade war to the extent that Apple is a multinational company selling to consumers across the globe. And you've already seen consumers showing willingness to hold on to their iPhones uh, for extended periods of time uh, if they get concerned about the global economy. So I think today's news on the inverted yield curve uh, does poke some risk for Apple shares. Well, what, you're going to change your price target? Uh, actually, no. So all right, on that point, I think what you're seeing is that this uh, transition into services, as you pointed out, has enabled the company to you know, maintain their uh, revenue growth rate and their free cash flow, and they're still returning a lot of that free cash flow to buybacks. So I would say this is a risk we're monitoring, but today would not inspire me to lower my target. Mm. Tim, your comments? Yeah, well, I, I think I echo some of the same comments as the other guest, but where the tariffs are concerned is really a micro story, whether Apple can manage its supply chain, what margins will be on the phone over the next few quarters. So tariffs really aren't the issue. It's being able to sell iPhones and particularly services into those economies that we're perhaps having a little bit of a, of a war with. So we really want the Chinese market open not just to iPhones, but to all of Apple services. And I'd say the same about India. People don't pay a whole lot of attention to it, but India has some pretty restrictive trade policies. So all that we're doing around the world to fight for access to other markets is much more important to Apple two, three, four years down the road than perhaps the cost of a broadband antenna uh, going into 2020. So, Tom, where, what will the company look like if it was not an iPhone-based company? I, I can't imagine. Uh, I'm going to need a new iPhone, Sorkin. I'm like, my battery seems like it, it goes down so fast now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't have, I don't like the big one, but what's going to change that? I need a new one because of my battery, but that's not a business model. Basically, Apple will look more diversified. So you think about their efforts in premium content with Apple TV+. Plus. You think about what they're doing with healthcare, including wearable devices, enabling you to monitor your heart rate, among other things, on your smartwatch. Uh, you think about their efforts potentially in cars, to the extent that they may be creating a full uh, automated car or just an operating system for automated cars. So Apple in the future will be a much more diversified company. The smartphone will be one of many products and services they'll offer and it will represent a much lower portion of total sales. So you're okay with that? Now, you must be if you've got 270. You agree with that, Tim? They're, they're going to manage this? Uh, in, we don't know what the next great things are going to be, I guess. Well, I think that people's relationship with Apple really does start with the iPhone. So if you're going to move to a company that is selling more services, whether that be more AirPods, more watches, it still ties back to becoming an Apple customer. The good part about Apple is nobody leaves, so their customers yeah. stay with them and buy more and more services See, over time. So, you know, it's all about the AirPods.